So we're here for the Startup Hub and today's topic for discussion is uh, funding and investment trends. Uh, I look back on 2016 and I look forward on 2017 and I'm delighted to have Stuart McKnight from Ascendant Corporate Finance um, to talk me through um, those trends and, and also um, reflect on a report that they've just produced which uh, would suggest that 2016 was a far better year than many had predicted. So welcome Stuart. So um, 2016, I mean, I guess in some respects I was surprised when I looked at the report because you'd expect with some of the uncertainty for it to have been kind of a, a back-ended year in some respects in terms of some of the challenges. But um, how, how did you see it when you looked at some of the, the figures that came out in your report? Well, truthfully, we, we monitor this uh, constantly and we've done it for 20 years. And as we monitor it through the year, we, we expect it to be a dip around about the Brexit period. So the you know, Q2, Q3, and in fact, those were very big quarters. So, uh, again, it proves the ultimate resilience of venture investing within a UK and Irish environment. The, the second part is that there was a big drop off in Q4. Now, whether that's connected to Brexit, I couldn't honestly say. Our best guess is that the, some of the deals which were due to complete in Q4 actually rolled over into January this year, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, in a, in a minute. The, our overall expectations were uh, we were confounded because we were predicting more money and fewer deals. So in fact, we got less money than we expected and much more companies funded than we expected. So who knows, you can never predict everything. Also, in this flat year that maybe you're predicting at the moment, how do you see the kind of lumpy investment that we saw last year? So you talked about, um, I think, you know, Deliveroo, Farfetch, mm. and Skyscanner as you know significant, uh, mostly you know post 100 million pound kind of investments. Um, do you still see some of those kind of deals coming through as well? Well, the in my business we call those the you know whale catching or the the black swans. Um, I mean, who knows where they come from? Uh, in reality, though, just even the first two months of this year, there's been two reasonable sized deals. We've uh, the Atom Bank raised 100 million and uh, Funding Circle raised 83 million. So that's just in the first two months of the year. How many more are there going to be this year? Uh, I wouldn't like to predict, but I think that's encouraging. Um, first quarter of the year is always the busiest quarter for a number of technical reasons, uh, but we would anticipate. Uh, there will be a few more of those coming through. Whether there will be another delivery you this year, I would be slightly surprised, but uh, certainly 100 million going into Atom is pretty good. So we've talked about some of the, the really big deals, um, but what about um, the gaps in the market lower down? Do you, do you see this funding gap? What's your, your view of, uh, of that end of the market? Well, let me say again and say it as loudly as I possibly can, is that there has never, ever, being a funding gap in the UK and Ireland. We've tracked all the deals for 20 years. We track everything over half a million. Uh, if we put them in a chart, we would be able to see a nice straightforward line with funding amounts available at all stages at the market. So between half a million and a million, between a million and three million, between three million and five million, five million plus, et cetera, et cetera. There is no gap. Uh, there's plenty of investors at each level. Um, obviously, as you get um, onto larger deals, the investors become a lot more picky and they have a lot more deals to choose from, so it's more difficult to actually raise money as you get bigger, but it's certainly possible. Uh, so we would strongly encourage people to figure out what they need quickly, figure out who they should be speaking to for investors and get in front of them, get on radar ASAP. And we talked a little bit about <coughs> trends and things for uh, 2016. Do you see any particular areas um, of growth in 2017? I mean, we're already seeing a lot of kind of AI, machine, AI and machine learning kind of opportunities cropping up, but um, do you see anything particular that's going to come out or is it, again, a kind of general across the, the areas you've highlighted? Well, we, uh, you'll excuse me from laughing, we've been doing this for um, 20 years and if we, when we look at our database of companies, I can look at companies who have changed their tags every year on year to get AI in or, or deep, deep data uh, and various things over the years and they just change the buzzwords every year to fit into what they think investors are looking for. The, no one should be confused about um, investors' ability to see through um, uh, name tag branding or name tag uh, you know, on trend, on message, uh, 
uh, communications. It's certainly important to have a relevant story, but nevertheless, people are still looking at the underlying proposition. Does it make sense? Can they make money? And will they get customers actually and sell the product and service that's attached to it? The, the reality is that if you look at some of the, the, the big trends, like the FinTech things, a lot of those guys have huge markets. So the, the Atom Bank, for example, example the various online banks, uh, they're, you know, that's a massive opportunity, massively disruptive, and one can see where if you put money into it, they could potentially really come through big time. And that's where the magic is. I wouldn't get too wrapped up on individual sectors. I would be, if I was companies out raising capital, I'd be looking at um, companies who have raised capital in my sector over the last two to three years and see where the, the most active investors are. There are you know, areas which are much harder, so hardware companies are finding it very difficult, as they have done for many years. Clean tech are finding it very difficult, as they have done for many, many years. Uh, within certain types of software, uh, the growth isn't quite as large as it is in other markets. In certain e-marketplaces, um, there's great opportunities with, where it's very easy. Oh, well, it's not easy. It's never easy. It's certainly possible to establish good metrics. Uh, if I spend a pound on advertising, I get two pounds of revenue. So the many of those key metrics can be there, drive an investment case for those companies. So thanks, Stuart. Thanks for a very uh, interesting discussion. And uh, we've obviously referred to a report uh, along the way uh, in this discussion today. Um, for, our, for our viewers and our listeners, how can they um, find this report and get access to some of this information? Very easily. If they go to our website, uh, which is ascendant.co.uk, uh, click on the news and research um, tab, and the report will be there welcoming you into new levels of knowledge on the sector. And we look forward to having you back in uh, 2018 to reflect on hopefully another successful year in 2017. Very good. Well, uh, well thanks for the opportunity.